Sportsmanship Award goes to the boys from Dublin and Nemesis. They won a lot of friends. The Nemesis team from Dublin, controllers Peter Redmond and William Murphy, aviation technicians backed by engineer Joe Gavin. Nemesis' primary weapon is a pneumatic ram, 150 PSI pneumatic ram. Even though we might look furry and friendly, we've got a 2 mil stainless steel can. We're going to take plenty of batteries. This is a good run! Already dead metal's out of it! Look at that horrible grin! And Matilda waits, and that's a good dummy for Matilda! And that's a very good run, and they're through! And kill off Shunt! Oh, he's not going to go again, surely! We thought Shunt was unbeatable and fearless! Go on, Shunt, get out! Talk about living on the edge! And Nemesis surely through! Marvellous! <clears throat> that was my friend, and you knocked him off. <laughs> yeah, we stuck the tail out with the three big spikes and jammed the wheels. Is that what you did then? You were able to knock him off? Yeah, well, that's tactics we were working on all day. <laughs> this is getting to be a habit. Everyone's killing my mate. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I hate you for winning that. Blunderbird 2. Blunderbird team. What modifications have you made? We have done nothing. Who have you been talking to? You can't prove anything. I forgot what my line was. <laughs> <laughs> Steady progress by Plunderbird. You can see the raising blade on the front. <laughs> <laughs> they might have brought out a record. Plunderbird, towards the platform. They didn't record a great distance, though, did they? What was all that about? Well, we've heard that the house robots were getting a bit hard and a bit cheesed off with people going down that lane, so we just had to go for a bit of violence, really, and um, unfortunately I drove in the pit before we could actually get them. You just drove straight into the pit. It was like you were scared of the robot. We, we're not scared of the robots. We're going to trash the house robots. Oh. We're, we're not scared of you. We just want some violence. OK. Violence! Thunderbirds, no mouth and no trousers. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, great stuff from Blunderbird in the pit. Terrible driving. For the second year running, doubling up with the trophies from Ireland, the Diotior boys, great guys, richly deserved. What a run here for Diotior! They're on fire! Oh, great! I'd pay my mission fee just to see this! Look at this! They're on fire! A flame of burning! Diotor! They've got to rebuild it <laughs> all over again. At least the look at the flag on top. At least that's not Cease. smouldering. Diotor have got to rebuild it once again, all over again. Well, there's no doubt about that. The winner is Diotor, son of Nemesis. The winners, Diotor, for the third year running. The original Good Samaritans behind the scenes. Again, they didn't go too far in battle, but behind the scenes, they helped everyone else out. A spot of welding from Kieran, a bit of electronics from Peter. Be interesting to see what damage there was to Diotor before we even began in the pits. Well, you can see they're not right, are they? Driven immediately back there. And Ming Tu and Bolt from the Blue almost like a pincer attack. Forcing Jotor back to the arena wall and now dangerously towards the flame pit. The crowd loves Jotor and the boys from Dublin because they don't seem to be mind being charbroiled. But at the moment, is that an inflammable Jotor we're seeing out there? An indestructible Jotor? Well, they'll have to write themselves very quickly, Peter Edmund and Kieran Bird. Meanwhile, the two underdogs there, Ming Tu and Bolt from the Blue Circle, dangerously avoid each other. Well, that was nothing, just a, a bit of a bruise and a bump, but Jotor is in real trouble here. Peter and Karen need to get out from that arena wall, and they are on fire now! That's the end, surely, for Diotto. It is! Oh, what a shame! The winners are... Pussycat and the Gribble Boys and Robert Bettington. Pussycat can't get away until that moment. Spins that circular blade coming forward, trying to create damage. On the Executioner, on the flames, Pussycat moving away up to 14 miles an hour top speed. Slightly the quicker of the two, the lighter of the two. On the trail of the Executioner now. Just wonder about the vulnerability of those tyres of the Executioner. From behind, if Pussycat can get an attack, that's a full frontal slam, and both robots seem to be OK. And withstanding punishment from the Pussycat blade and from the 
Executioner's jaw, beak, cutting blade, call it what you will, at the front there. Well done. Well, you're ranked number two, beaten in the final of the last war. Think you can go one better? We can. We can indeed. It was excellent driving there. Excellent driving. <laughs> the way you, you pressed the pit release and then manoeuvred the robot into the pits, we were all very impressed. That blade of yours. Yeah, I know. It's uh, something else, isn't it? <laughs> it is something else, isn't it? How fast has it been? It's about, what, two and a half, two and a half thousand RPM? Two and a half thousand. And what's it made of? Because it just seems stronger than most metals. It's made of chrome vanadium steel, 14% yeah. chrome vanadium. Because uh, this flywheel on Matilda now... It's awesome, isn't it? It is it something else, awesome. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, really. Better than the chainsaw. It's better than anything we've got. I just want to keep away from it. That's right. <laughs> wise, wise, wise. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lion Roars Pussycat! <laughs>to recognise the camaraderie in the pits. And though Cat 3 went out early on, Keith Williams, Georgie Reid and Julianne Williams were terribly helpful. And so for the Sportsmanship Award, we go for Cat 3. Cat 3. Roboteers, stand by. Barbara's two teams, Simon Rafferty, Guy Radford, Chris Watts. <laughs> and cat three with the furry ears, Keith and Julianne Williams and Georgie Reed. So killer lots in there. Not any furry ears there. And shunt. Three, two, one. Activate. Well, they're very tentative coming out, aren't they? Cat three. Oh, down came the axe, but when Barbarous two moves with a menace. It can thrust anything away. It has just tossed 97 kilos of Cat 3 across the arena. I think if they could truly modify Barbarous so that it was better controlled, they could have a deadly weapon here. The spinning, twisty, turny, spiky Barber's pole. Cat 3 on its side. And where can Cat 3 go from here? Go faster, orange tiger stripes, we know. It has the girl power. At the moment, the arena is going to be kitty littered, I think. And, and all that effort you went through, I mean, look, I mean, look, look at the costumes. Well, we the went out in style. See, you've got tails. Do you think if, you, if you'd spent more time on the <laughs> robot and less time on the outfit, it might have been a better result. Where would the fun in that be, though? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. This is Cat 3.